Hello Godot Conference, I'm Harmony Monroe and today I will be showing you my work on Operation Outbreak. Of course this started on one of the Godot forums I saw a job listing post that I replied to for an online multiplayer educational game and in a couple days I put together this prototype called Skate Chat that is a online multiplayer game using Silent Wolf to synchronize data between everyone. You can pretty much skate in a circle, skate around some cones, and chat with other players. And I emailed this to Andres Calobri, who responded to me and said, let's work together. We also worked with Facundo Fernandez. So this next video here is the beginning of the project, and I was met with this GitHub repository with a folder in it called Code from Lena, or Lena as it's pronounced. So Lena uh, built this foundation for what we were working with here. And you can see every great project starts with a Godot icon. I went ahead and replaced that with these faces here to get some character going and see what happens if we have collision between these characters. Eventually I decided collision is unnecessary. And I was also working on a 2.5D version of Skate Chat using this uh, marionette puppet character sort of vibe with these uh, 2D images. Everything here is made out of Polygon 2Ds and Line 2D nodes from Godot Engine. And it rotates in such a way that it looks like a 3D image. I am using the X and Y coordinate with a node parent and then it's offset on another Y coordinate so it's faking the Z axis in this case. You can move everything around on these three different dimensions and then when you rotate them in a specific way you get this effect, 2.5D stack sprite effect as some people call it. So I use this same puppet design and I added elbows and knee joints and I removed the skateboard and after that I added this walking animation which is pretty simple there's also an infection stat that would change the color of the player but you can see here we got some art coming there's a doorway and some buildings and this character can move around in the world so in this clip we have the animation synchronizing between the four clients when you are walking you can see your animation and you can see the animation of other online players walking around there's also different colors that are being synchronized. And here we have a chat window going on. And now we have uh, players infecting each other. So you get close to someone who is green or yellow and they'll turn red with your red virus. Turn back to green. I'll turn this person back to green as well. And you see they don't infect each other but this red person will infect them. The ring now changes colors when you're in contact with another player. We ended up uh, removing this ring for playing. It's just a debugging visualization. So in this update I added colliding with buildings. You can walk into the doorway of something but you cannot walk around the edges and that entrance doorway has no collision at the moment. I'm really just testing it with these simple polygon buildings. So you can walk inside the door frame. That's about as far as you can go. Here we're showing off the code to join a specific instance of the game because you want to join whatever classroom of students you're playing with. So in this case the code is test. If you type in something else it won't do much. And now we have a chat box working. Whatever you type will be visible to other players in the chat box as well. In this update I added some street assets, a little park here, make it a little bit looking more like a town to flesh out the world a bit. This is when I added the mask to the players. You can see if I unclip the content and rotate the character, the mask actually exists outside of the face. But when you clip the content, it looks like it's a part of a 3D texture almost, although it's just 2D images rotating around that center axis. Now we have implemented some items. There's simple text on top of it showing quiz item, test item, mask item, vaccine item, food item, etc. You can pick up items and when you pick up a mask it will actually change your player from having a mouth that's uncovered to a mask now covering your mouth and it will reflect online as well. 
So now we've implemented the icons from the mobile phone game and put them into this version. So you can see the mask, vaccine, test, quiz, icons, and the food Apple icon. You can pick those up, but you can't see where it goes yet. And on this instance, we're showing that picking up items is client side. So if another player picks up an item, it won't be removed from your world. You also have an opportunity to pick up that item and everything has to start somewhere so this inventory display is just some simple text on the screen that says inventory display so in this next video you can see the mask gets picked up the quiz gets picked up the vax gets picked up and it adds these counters in the bottom left corner showing how many of each item you have in this video we're seeing that the health status icon from the mobile app is now in the bottom left corner where it shows healthy sick very sick recovered with a little squiggly icon and now the inventory display is in the bottom center of the screen. There's also these little sickness contagious particles that show yellow if you're mildly sick, red if you're very sick, it's emitting these particles around you kind of like germs. You can also die and become a ghost and be an invisible character like this. We also took the ring out because the ring was just for debugging purposes and we don't need players to see when they're in contact with others. So in this update, I made a little debug menu that will toggle the ring for our testing purposes. We can see if players are making contact or not. It's not something we wanna be visible in the final game, so we can turn it off. In this update, you can see the text is now appearing over players' heads, and every player is also assigned a random color at the start. We've done away with the green is healthy, red is sick color. We want it to be more ambiguous as to who around you is sick and who is healthy. So now the synchronization of contagious effects and visual health is working, which means that whatever health status you have or contagion status you have, on the client side is being reflected on the server side so other players can see your contagious germs. And in this update, it's pretty silly, but item inventory display was not working on the online clients. It was only working on the host. So now it works across all clients. Everyone can see what items they have picked up. In this update, we have a server and three clients. So the server is running an instance of the game that does not have a player. And then there are three clients that can connect to that server instance. You'll have to uh, ask Facundo more about this. He is responsible for the server side code and multiplayer. In this update, we have a username that now shows under each player walking around. So whatever you set your username to be will be visible in the game world. This person's name is I am cool. The other person's name is so am I. And the last person to join is I'm less cool. Sorry. You can see their names under each player. This update has a little debug menu where instead of using random keybinds assigned by me, you can interact with this user interface to debug the game. And that means changing your contagion status and changing your health status and also showing that ring of contact around your player. And this is a giant 17 minute video. You can see the map looks a lot different here. I spent a whole giant night up late putting this map together for this test here because we wanted a convincing video to show to the rest of the UMass Chan Medical School to be uh, see if this game is worthy of getting more funding and continuing the project. We did about two months of work at this point and once we showed them this video we got approved for about another month's worth of work on the project. So this is the simplest online prototype we put together where Players can join a world, chat together, pick up items, and infect one another. And there's a giant map to walk around with two parks, a few streets, and some hidden items all around the corners. And now the character customization comes into play. Here I am changing the properties in the Godot editor to make a player have specific colors to customize your character. So there is a group of different nodes that have a color assigned and when you change a color of one of these properties, it will assign a modulate property to all of the nodes in that group. And here we have the character creator working in the game itself. I was a bit inspired by the old school RuneScape character creator 
with some left and right arrows to change what your player looks like. There's a hat, hair, face, eye, shirt, hands, pants, and feet color can all be changed. There is a preset palette of colors to choose from. You just click left and right and see what looks best on your character. You can change your clothes at any time, clicking the change clothes button at the top left. There's also a randomization button. And I feel like every good game has a character creator. It's nice to express yourself in your digital avatar and be able to tell one player apart from another. So putting this character creator in was something I wanted to do from the beginning and I'm glad that I got it in there. And after that character creator, I started doing some revisions to the UI based on Andreas's feedback. So there is a hunger meter and there is a mask meter, which means after a while you'll get hungry, you gotta eat more food. And after a while your mask will wear off, you have to get a new mask. There's also a readout for your testing status whether you tested positive or tested negative, and how long it's been since that last test. If it's over a minute, it will show that. There's also a list of symptoms you're experiencing, and there is a money counter to be spent in a shop that we have yet to implement. This is about as far as we've come on Operation Outbreak. Hopefully we can continue to work on this in the future. There is plenty of educational budget cuts that are holding us back at the moment, so Hopefully we can find some more funding and put some more effort into this project because it's been a lot of fun making it. Thank you to Andres Calobri and Facundo Fernandez for collaborating on this. And I thank you to Godot Engine for making this so easy to do. And if you are watching this on the stage at Godot Conference, thank you for attending. Sorry I wasn't able to make it up to Boston today. Uh, goodbye from Baltimore and enjoy yourselves. Take care.